you're frank. If you have a kids later on and you miss this opportunity, what are you going to tell your kids? I start have something called crypto and the blockchain and financial market and I left. They will laugh at you, right? As you can see, the definition of the blockchain. Blockchain is a digital ledger technology that secures transactions across the network computer called nodes. Okay, so it's designed to be decentralized, transparent, temper-proof, ensure that once that data is recorded, then it cannot be altered or deleted. It's so important, guys. Let's, let's assume that the normal office, if I take a file in the office, if someone destroy that file, can we retrieve those data that that data is gone? If we have a server and that server has a problem or just blown up or has uh, issues with it and virus get in and deleted all the files, can we retrieve it? Yes, we can retrieve some of them, not all of them. Okay, so, but the blockchain is different. Anything is recorded in the blockchain, no one can change it. That's the beauty of the blockchain. And it's a decentralized, no one is controlling it. Okay, so the key characteristics of the blockchain. One, is it decentralized. Two, immutable. Three, transparent. As I said earlier, it's unlike traditional database system. So the data, normal database that we know is centralized, right? Someone is controlling it. But when it comes to the blockchain, no one is controlling it. Okay? Means each node holds a copy of entire blockchain. So remember what I said, no one is controlled, it's decentralized. One node that's working, the whole world can access to that. Why? Because it has the entire blockchain data. Just a single node. Okay? So that means no one can manage or control it, can manipulate the data if they want to. But the centralized database, someone can manipulate that data, right? They can delete, they can add what they want and do whatever they want because they are controlling it. But in the blockchain, once the data is recorded, no one can alter or delete it. That's why the word immutable is coming in. It's unchangeable. No one can change it. Whatever is in there is there forever. So the information that's added to the blockchain, it becomes nearly impossible to change. That's why the hackers cannot hack within the blockchain. It's very difficult to hack, okay? Because if they change the block, they have to change all the other blocks. Can they do that? There's a millions of blocks there. So how the blockchain works? Number one, Transaction initiation. Two, verification. Three, block creation. Four, adding to the chain. Five, completion. This is how the block, uh, when it's created, goes through. So number one is transaction initiation. So you initiate transactions. A user requests a transaction which can be involved, cryptocurrency, digital assets, or any other data. So let's say if I transfer money now to Sada, while she's sitting there, I can transfer one million US dollar. Can I do that through the bank? I can't. Because if I go to the bank and I need to transfer one million US dollar to Sada, I have to fill a lot of forms, right? Where this money coming from? Why I'm sending to Sada? Who is Sada? And after that, can I still send the money to Sada? No. The money has to be processed go through the New York, then three to four working days, after that, coming to the Saudi account. Even if Saudi want to withdraw that much money from her account, she has to answer so many questions. Who is this guy? Why he sent it to you? What's the relationship be between you and two? What are you gonna do with the money? You know, it's her money. And she has to answer all these questions. And it's my money, and I have to answer all these questions. Why? Because the banks are controlled by single entity, okay? But within the blockchain, while she's here in the class, I can transfer her one million US dollar while she's sitting there. No question asked. And even I will pay fraction of commission which I, what I will pay through the bank. 
efficient, time, uh, less time, cheap, and fast and secure. Isn't that beautiful? That's the ability of the blockchain. It gives us a power that to do whatever we need to do. Blockchain is giving power back to the people, not other third party is controlling you. So then that transaction needs to be verified. So the money we pay as a gas fee when we're buying or selling um, coins, like a Bitcoin, Ethereum, that those fees that are deducted from our account, not all of them take it by exchange. Some of them will be given by validators, the miners, those who create the blocks. That's why they get reward. Okay? So transaction is broadcast to the network of computer nodes, and that validates and verifies the data using complex algorithms. So whoever solved that uh, algorithm will seal the block. So block creation now, once it's verified, the, uh, number one was transaction, two, verification, three, block creation. Now they create the block. Once they verify me and her, we are known user because both of them will do what? KYC, know your customer, okay? They have my data, they have the uh, set of the data, so now, when it's verified, transaction is grouped with other group of transactions and will create a form of block. So do you think the block will be only my transaction? No, there will be other transactions are there. So all of them will form as a block. So now, once they form the block, that block needs to stay where? In the chain, right? They have to add it into the chain. That's why the word block and chain comes in. They create the block and they add in into the chain. So once they add into the chain, the new block is added to the existing blockchain in linear, linear. So it means each block contains the reference of the previous block and creating secure linked data. So the block must contain three criteria. Data, hash, previous hash. So this is the most important information that the block must hold. My data, the data, the previous hash, that unique number to that particular block, and the previous hash, that unique number of the previous block. Because if you look at the block chain, there's a blocks like this, connected by what? Chain. So each block has a unique number. That unique number will identify that particular block. And it's called hash. That unique number, we call it in blockchain, hash. So. Once the block is created, another block will be connected. The hash that having this block become what? Previous hash. So because it's a previous block, right? So it will be the previous hash. So the next block will be connected to. So if they try to manipulate or change one of these block, that block become what? Invalid. Cannot be recognized the previous block. Okay? So they need to change all these blocks and which millions of blocks out there. Can they do that? No, they can't. They will need Nairobi city of manpower and computers. Is that possible? That's impossible. That's why it's impossible uh, to hack within the block. But where they hack, we, every day we hear this, uh, this uh, exchange hacked money or that coin hacked money, they hack through the bridge only three of them which I see is necessary to know public blockchain private blockchain and the consortium blockchain okay as the name suggests the public blockchain is just like ethereum and Solana I mean uh, Bitcoin so these are public blockchains Bitcoin and ethereum are public blockchain. anyone can go in there even Solana anyone can go in there and build whatever they want to build okay Today, if you know how to, if you're a developer, you can go to any of these blockchains, which are public blockchains, you don't need permission from anyone to use those services. Okay? You can go there, pay the gas fee, and build any project that you need to build. That's why it's called Open House. It's called Open House. The Sorry. private blockchain, you need to have brief verification. You need to have authorization before you come in and build something like it. 
So you, they have to know you who you are. In order for me to use the platforms, I need to request and get permission. That's why the other one, this one is called permission less blockchain. That's the open house, right? It's a permission list. You don't need any permission from anyone to build anything on there. But the private blockchain, we call it permissioned blockchain. So you need to have pre-verification authority in order to build something on it. Because it's a private. And this, who, who use this one? Banks, insurance companies, supply chains, all these big institutions, they use private blockchain. Why they do that? They don't want anyone to access their data. Because if they make it public, me and Frank will be having authority to access to it because we don't need permission from anyone, okay? But it's a private, we can't access that. There's other one, it's called consortium blockchain. Consortium will balance between the public blockchain and the private blockchain, okay? Will balance between those two. So that's why consortium, it's controlled by group of organizations. This one controlled by what? Nobody. It's a public, it's open, okay? But the private blockchain controlled by enterprises and business entities, right? This single entity is controlling it because you have to get permission in order to have an access on it. But when it comes to consortium blockchain, as I said, controlled by the group of organization rather than single entity because the private blockchain controlled by single entity is they, that they own it. You have to have a permission in order to access that. The public blockchain, do I need permission from anyone? No, it's permissionless blockchain. I, I go there and up by pay the gas fee and then build my project on there. I don't need any permission from anyone as a developer. But in private blockchain, you need to have access. Okay, they have to allow you because they're controlled by single entity. But the consortium blockchain controlled by group of organizations. They are group of them. That means if one is objecting and majority is accepting, so majority rules, right? So you have still access to that. No one have a power to say yes or no, because this has to be collective application of the blockchain. We can use so many applications of the blockchain, like cryptocurrency, supply chain, smart contract, healthcare, finance. Remember at the beginning what I said, blockchain can be used anything. Healthcare system, financial system, supply chain, the, ch the, the planes, the ships, all these kind of things, insurance companies, all they can use a blockchain. Blockchain only, not only a cryptocurrency. Many people think like blockchain only will be used by cryptocurrency. No, it's a well known by cryptocurrency, it's true. Is the one which introduced to the world, but still you can use for the other services as well. Education system can be used on the blockchain. So the cryptocurrency is the technology behind a cryptocurrency like a Bitcoin. Blockchain is the technology behind the cryptocurrency like a Bitcoin Ethereum, enabling secure, transparent digital currency transactions. Supply chain management improves transparency and traceability by recording every step of the product from manufacture to the consumer. So let's say if I, I, I request an order from Alibaba today. Can I see step by step where my order is? No. You will see only once. One is the Alibaba is shipping to you and they scan and they give you tracking number. Then you can track my parcel where it will be or all the transit till it arrives to me. But with the blockchain, it will give you an ability to check and follow step by step. The minute you order, till you receive your order. Isn't that beautiful? Again, that's my contract. The self-executing contract in terms of agreement. Let's say you are, Frank has a piece of land somewhere in Nakuru. And I want to buy from him. I'm a buyer, he's a seller, right? So. In, in normal conditions, the way we are today, how long it will take me to buy from this land, piece of land? Several months, it's true, okay? Maybe if I'm quick and several weeks, why? Because I have to check the title deed. I have to take the title deed, go to where? The registry office, what am I gonna do? I have to fill forms, 
I have to pay fees. Okay, they will come back to me and answer a few days later. Then I have to go to local government again, fill another forms and pay fees. Then they will come back to me after a few days. I will get the answer from there. What else I need to do? I have to go to lawyer to verify everything. Once the verification is done, that will take weeks, right? It's not the guys overnight. How much money I spent and how much money time I lost a lot, right? I paid a lot of money through the register office, through the local government, the lawyers. Okay. Now, don't forget the broker who brought the piece of life to me. I have to be, give him something as well. So now I'm paying, 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 even before I buy that piece of land in order to verify whether it's legit or not. Maybe Frank has other siblings. He's running away from them. So all this mess and waste of time and waste of money, the blockchain can minimize that. If the Frank put his piece of land on the blockchain, I don't need to go all this hassle. All I need is to view the GPS, go and view the land. He is the original owner, okay? And then I will buy from him. The minute I transact money to Frank, the ownership will be transferred to me immediately. Frank will be. So the benefits of the blockchain. Number one, as you can see, security, two, transparency, three, efficiency. That's why the whole world wants to know about this. All the banks, all the institutions, all the uh, supply chains, they want to understand how the blockchain works. Okay? So by security, cryptographic technique make the blockchain highly secure and resistant to hacks. Remember what I said at the beginning, hackers, they don't like the blockchain because they cannot hack within the blockchain. Okay? Why? Because it's secured by a cryptographic technique. It's a highly, blockchain is highly secure. Right? So, transparency. You cannot hide anything. As I said, Frank, the government, if they're using it, they can track, everyone can track. If the KCB goes to the blockchain, all the Kenyan citizens will have access to their data. Do you think they will happy with that? How they maneuvering their money, how they using your money, all that, you will see it. Then, the participant. Anyone, once the transaction is verified and added to the chain, is visible to everyone. It's by building the trust in the system. So it means if you can view all the transactions that build the trust, right? It will boost your confidence. So efficiency is very efficient. Why? Eliminate the need of the for intermediaries regarding transactions. And as I said earlier, if I send money to Saada, 1 million USD, it will cost me a fraction of that. And in five minutes or one minute or three, it depends how the blockchain fast. I mean, the transaction uh, process to uh, validators and reminders fast, it, she will receive the money. So I paid less money and I spent less time too.